Hello and welcome to another TLDR Global video. With 195 countries in the world, it's unsurprising that they don't all get along. I mean, I struggle to name 55 people I like, let alone 195 countries. Like me though, most countries have a close bunch of friends who they actually like, their allies. And like human friendships, things get complicated. Not everyone likes their friends' friends or their allies' allies. So we end up with a pretty complex web of alliances and friendships, which look something like this. Now, this is one of the maddest maps we've ever made you look at. So in this video, we're going to break down the global alliances, the most important allies and the groups of allies that shape the world. Before we start, though, if you want to show pride in your country or alliance, then check out our Countries with Shoes pin badges. These high quality enamel pin badges feature our iconic Countries with Shoes designs, and we have them for a whole ton of countries. You can even get a global pin to show a bit of global unity at this difficult time. As a bonus, if you use the code ALLIANCE and buy any three pins, then I'll manually add a bonus signed pin badge to your order. Check out the full collection by clicking the link in the description. One thing you're going to hear a lot about in this video is mutual defence agreements. These are agreements whereby if an external force attacks one country, all of the others come to their defence. Essentially, an attack on one is an attack on all. Now, not all of these alliances contain such an agreement, but you'll be surprised how much of this web is made up of mutual defence agreements. So, how are we going to explain this mess in a succinct YouTube video? Well, we're going to have to skim over a ton of detail, and if you want us to follow up this video with more detail about any of the alliances, then let us know which ones you want to hear about acts in the comments below. And if we're going to do this, we ought to start with one of the big alliances, like NATO. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization was founded in 1949, in the aftermath of World War II. It started as a mutual defence pact between the UK and France, with them agreeing that they'd defend each other if anyone were to attack. This then evolved, with new members joining over time, until NATO was officially founded two years later. Today, that core agreement remains strong, and if anyone attacks a NATO member state, then all of the other members should come to their defence. Another significant alliance that, well, we have a whole channel about is the European Union. Now, the Union isn't explicitly a military alliance, but luckily for our list, they abide by the Common Security and Defence Policy, which contains a mutual defence clause. Interestingly, the EU's defence agreement actually goes further than most, because many EU states share one external border while eradicating all internal borders. So their common Frontex border force acts to protect the common borders of the Union. The UK has rather notably left the EU, but that doesn't mean that they've left all of their European alliances behind, with them holding dedicated alliances with both France and Portugal. And these ones are old. The UK-Portugal alliance was ratified in 1373, making it the oldest political alliance still in place today. As such, since its signing, the two have never waged war against each other, or even been on opposing sides of a major conflict. Although today, most agreements are done via NATO and the UN, rather than via this direct alliance. The UK-France agreement is much newer though, and is from 1904. At the time, it included the two recognising a bunch of mutual territory claims. It's not just Europe who has a big continent-based alliance though, with the economic community of West African states joining together in a political and economic union, with them even having a community parliament. This group also has a non-aggression protocol and a joint allied armed force of the community. Asia also has a handful of alliances. The Axis of Resistance, an unofficial alliance between Iran, the Syrian Assad regime and the militant group Hezbollah, designed to resist Israel and the West. There's also the Peninsula Shield Force, the military arm of the Gulf Cooperation Council, which itself is a regional intergovernmental political and economic union made up of Arab Gulf states. You've also got the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, a political, economic and security alliance with the group holding regular military exercises in order to ensure cooperation and coordination against terrorism. There's also the Sino-North Korean Mutual Aid and Cooperation Friendship Treaty, the wordy title of the Chinese and North Korean alliance which sees the two agree to defend each other against external threats, although I think it's fair to say that one country is likely to be doing more of the defending here. 
The Arab League might straddle two continents, but it's another geographical alliance. Formed all the way back in 1945, this alliance attempted to draw together countries through the Arab League Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organization, as well as containing a joint defense treaty. A number of these countries are also in the Islamic Military Alliance, which is far newer and specifically attempts to tackle terrorism in the region, taking on all terrorist groups regardless of ideology or sect. However, the group only contains Sunni-dominated governments, with Shia governments notably missing, leading some to suspect that they might be a little more sectarian than they claim. Tying together Africa and South America, you'll find the South Atlantic Peace Cooperation Zone, which attempts to promote cooperation and the maintenance of peace and security. It also contains an agreement to prevent nuclear weapons development, with none of the countries involved holding nuclear weapons of their own, after South Africa got rid of theirs in the late 1980s. Staying in the Americas, you'll find the truly continental Organization of American States. And no, we don't mean American states like Texas or Nebraska. This one's actually an international organization containing basically all countries in the Americas. The OAS was founded after World War II in an attempt to instill solidarity and cooperation in the Western Hemisphere, with a real focus on democracy, the protection of elections, handling drug issues, and defending human rights. Also in the Americas, you'll find the Inter-American Treaty of Reciprocal Assistance known as the RIO Act, which sees countries grouped together to agree mutual defence. The Caribbean community is too small to actually put on this map, but it's made up of these Caribbean islands and is primarily an economic and cultural alliance, seeing these Caribbean countries grouping together. And you've got the Regional Security System, which again is too small for this map, but sees the group join together for mutual defence, as well as helping with issues such as smuggling, drug issues, uprisings and natural disasters. Staying with the Americas, the United States actually loves an alliance, holding official individual alliances with Afghanistan, Israel, Japan, Pakistan, the Philippines, Thailand, South Korea, Taiwan, Argentina, Brazil, Bahrain, Kuwait, Tunisia, Jordan, Egypt, Morocco, Australia, New Zealand, Palau, Micronesia, and the Marshall Islands. There's also the two Five Country Alliances, rather confusingly called the Five Eyes and the Five Powers. The Five Eyes Alliance started as an informal intelligence alliance in World War II, with codebreakers working together to solve issues. Today, the intelligence sharing continues and, according to many, is the most comprehensive known espionage alliance in the world. The Five Powers Alliance swaps out Canada and the US for Malaysia and Singapore, and this one's slightly less strict than some of the others. Rather than immediately coming to each other's defence, if one country is attacked, then they'll communicate to coordinate an official response. Okay, so that covers off most of the alliances, but let's finish up with some of the smaller ones. Japan and Australia have an alliance which provides shared military operations and training, with the two trying to work together to counter China's domination in the region. Much like the US, Britain has a long-standing relationship with Israel. However, an actual alliance has yet to be publicly released, despite a military cooperation agreement being signed in 2020, set to introduce defence medical training and defence education. There's also the RSII coalition, which pulls together Russia, Syria, Iran, Iraq and Hezbollah, with the group working together to cooperate in the fight against ISIL, in large part out of concern that Russians are committing terrorist acts within ISIS. Turkey and Azerbaijan have a strategic partnership, whereby the two cooperate on security issues as well as supporting each other using all possibilities in the event of an attack. There's also the Union State between Russia and former Soviet nation Belarus. They are apparently open to new member states joining though, with the agreement currently focusing on economic cooperation, with political and military integration put on hold due to disagreements between the member states, all two of them. Similarly, there's the Collective Security Treaty Organization between six former Soviet republics, with this Soviet history actually being key to the alliance. This treaty started life as the Soviet Armed Forces before evolving into the Commonwealth of Independent States, which signed this treaty. As you'd expect, they've agreed not to fight with each other, as well as agreeing to mutual defence. The more unusual part of this, though, is the states agreeing not to join any other military alliances or groups of states, hence this area of the map being slightly quieter. 
There's also the deal that New Zealand have signed to assume defence responsibility for Western Samoa. Then, and this really is the last one, or at least the last one in this video, we have the Combined Maritime Forces. This is actually a pretty sizeable maritime alliance, which according to its own website, exists to uphold international rules-based order by counteracting illicit non-state actors on the high seas and promoting security, stability and prosperity. Essentially, working together to prevent piracy and protect shipping lanes. So now we have a complete map. And you can see quite how difficult geopolitics can be. Alliances are messy, and these ones are only the most secure and official ones. I'm sure the comments will be full of people telling us about other alliances we've missed, but even this illustrates how complex things can get. Let us know what you think of these alliances and pacts in the comments below, as well as telling us where you're from and who your country has natural alliances and friendships with. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.